Welcome to Groundhog Day. Here we go, guys. Yeah, fighter. Ooh, hope it's not. Oh, hope it's not any worse in the morning because if it is, I won't be going to work. Bloody hell! Look at it. Yeah, beauty. Not good, is it? Not good. Snow. All right, when you're a kid, when you get older, not much fun. Well, what can you do? You all right, guys? Just on site. This is why you don't park your car next to, you know, the metal railings that the um, put around the site stop people getting in. <laughs> oh, you fighter. Don't park your car right near one of them, especially if it's windy. Hopefully, I'm going to show you what's happened to this van. Oh, you fighter. There it is, a van. So someone's moved it now, see that railing? Fell on this van here. Fucked all this van up. Look at that. That fell in. So, he'll be bored, won't he? So, there you go, guys. Um, lesson to be learned there. Park in the designated car park when you're on site. Because no one's to blame if you're parking next to railings and uh, the wind blows it onto your van. Oh, you fighter! Hey, the cleaners, they're going to be pissed, aren't they? Look like a good van, to be fair. So, yeah, park in the designated car park as requested by the site agent when on site. Till next time. Wanker. <laughs> Wanker. <laughs> Wanker. Hey up, guys. You know I got that pair there. Uh, roller scuttle. What I've discovered is, depending on the conditions in the plot that you're working, basically if it's like damp and stuff, the, it doesn't dry around the sides and everything properly, and um, it just keeps uh, bits of bits of dry paint keep keep flaking off and and. Um, going in your paint when you're on seasons and shit like that and the corners they're, they're, they're just they're just a nightmare let me show show you what i'm on about this seeing these corners never dries out properly yeah always getting lumps of skin and stuff like that, that to be fair i think it's just a bad design and then you know you get flaking off and dropping in your paint especially if like it's damp and you got to build up there, um, it flakes off and starts coming up on your roller. So what I'm going to have to do is put a, a, a liner in it. As continued from the, the last video of life on the brush. A big spray like the Wagner or wh whichever one you prefer. Um, there, there is drawbacks to it and I'm a bit in two minds whether it's, it's quicker or not. And is it more hassle than it's worth? Now then, I started that plot and what I did, I had to go around, powder fill, gun fill, um, scrape the walls down, mask all the plugs off. And then I sprayed the, the whole plot and did all the, well, not sprayed the whole plot, but I cut the whole plot in using that particular type of um, spray machine. Now, the problem I found with it was, even though I'd done 
all the cutting in with the spray machine, there's still certain areas, right, that you can't cut in with one of them spray machines. Um, like, <clears throat> round the kitchen, stuff like that. You know, you can't use a spray machine to, to cut all that in. So that's all got to be done by hand. Even around the tops, it's debatable whether you can use a machine for that. Um, when it comes to the rats, now you got to drop the rat, ain't you? Because otherwise you're going to cover the rat in spray paint, and an agent's not going to want to see that, is he? Normally you just cut, you know, if it's had two coats uh, behind the rat on the base coat, you can just like cut round it, can't you? Um, another thing, when it comes to like downstairs toilets and bathrooms, I can't use a spray machine round that area and round that area. Basically because, you know, if I spend any more time masking up than what I've done round plugs and, and thermostats and, and consumer units, it's, it's just not, it's just not going to be viable. I, I can do it quicker by brush and roller. So <clears throat> you've got to ask yourself the question, is it worth it if you're on your own? doing all that prep, getting it ready and spraying it. And don't forget, you can tend to use a bit more paint for, for doing the cutting in uh, than you do with a brush and a roller. So, you know, you could find that your gaffer's saying, well, I gave you enough tubs, what are you ordering more for? And once you find out you're spraying it, they want to dock the price, don't they? So you've got to be a bit careful on that. Now, I think if you've got somebody working with you, i.e. Um, a YTS or, or something like that, you can get him going in front of you, doing all the prep work, scraping all the walls down, because you've got to scrape the walls down to get the snots off, haven't you? Because you don't want to be spraying over that lot, otherwise you're defeating the object. Get him to go around, um, gun up, fill up the next plot, scrape the walls down and... and uh, masking tape all the plugs plugs up then you can just follow behind and, and do all the spray now it would be quicker doing it that way but then you ask yourself the question well do i want a yts because half of them don't want to work do they you know what i mean and they just take the time so realistically you could say to yourself well might as well just do it by brush and roller now i would say one thing if i was doing big four beds and five bed plots then maybe it's going to be worth it. But when you come to like your two beds, um, your three beds, etc., you it could be debatable whether to use a spray machine for the cutting in. And then take into account, you've got to periodically clean your machine out, haven't you? Like flush all the water through. I, I mean, I did it. I think it took about 30, 40 litres to, to give it a good clean through. Some people do say you can leave it a couple of days without swilling it out. Uh, you, just, you know, the, um, the, the spray tip, just turn that round to the side so it, it doesn't dry out. So yeah, very debatable whether to use it, especially on the small plots. I personally found that I could have done it just as quick with a brush and roller when you take into consideration all the prep work that's needed before you get your machine out. So yeah, that's, that's just my opinion. Um, but if, if you had a YTS and you had half a dozen plots to go at, then yeah, bang on, good idea. When I talk about this, I do refer to like new build plots where um, a lot of the time a spray machine just isn't viable and you can do it quicker with a brush and roller if you're prepared to graft for the day. So, yeah, there you go. Tell me what you think, to be fair. I personally think I can do it quicker with brush and roller. You've got to ask yourself the question, haven't you? What do you come work for? Do you come work like me to earn money as much as humanly possible? in five days? Or are you one of them guys that go work to get away from the missus? Bit of a break from the other half? Or are you one of those guys that come work 
to pay for an extravagant lifestyle regarding snap. That's it, snap. Your lunch, you break it off nine, you break it off 12. Are you one of them guys that like to go up to the local shop or garage and spend a couple of quid on a Costa? <laughs> a Costa coffee and, you know, pre-packed sandwiches and biscuits and Volvic water. Are you one of them guys? Because if you are, you should ask yourself, am I just coming work to make somebody else rich? Is it because you're too lazy to make your own pack up? Now then, there is a few people like that, isn't there? I'm not one of them. I can work to earn money and get it in the bank and buy new cars and things like that. Not to pay between five and 10 quid a day on me lunch. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This lovely painter at work, good lad he is, good lad, but he likes to spend his money. I mean, I don't know, what's one of them costs you? Volvic water, strawberry, can of coke that he's dropped on the floor and just left. You know, we've got Nescafe gold lattes and pot noodles, you know. Um, Costa coffee, yeah. Big packets of biscuits. What else? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't normally go through the rubbish, you know what I mean? There's another one, look. You know. I mean, yeah. Ah, there's all, there's all sorts in there, as you can see. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, fine, so. And there's some pre-packed sandwiches yeah, in there. Yeah, you've, you've really got to ask yourself, how much are you spending in a week? You might be spending 40, 50 quid, even 70, 80 quid. If you buy cigarettes as well, you know, straights as we call them in England, not rollies. So yeah, he is spending an absolute mass fortune when he could just go down Marks and Spencer's like me and buy it all in bulk and bring it to work on a daily basis. Instead of going up the garage up the road and making them stinking rich. Hmm. Inquiring minds want to know, what do you think? I can do my left.